Section 14 of Commentary on the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians by John Calvin. Translated by William Pringle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 21 to 23. But that ye also may know my affairs, and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen but that ye also may know. Uncertain or false reports frequently produce uneasiness, chiefly, no doubt, in weak minds, but sometimes also in thoughtful and steady persons. To prevent this danger, Paul sends Tychicus, from whom the Ephesians would receive full information. The holy solicitude which Paul felt about the interests of religion, or to use his own language, the care of all the churches, was thus strikingly evinced. When death stood constantly before his eyes, neither the dread of death nor anxiety about himself prevented him from making provision for the most distant churches. Another man would have said, My own affairs require all the attention I can give. It would be more reasonable that all should run to my assistance than that they should expect from me the smallest relief. But Paul acts a different part and sends in every direction to strengthen the churches which he had founded. Tychicus is commended that his statements may be more fully believed, a faithful minister in the Lord. It is not easy to say whether this refers to the public ministry of the church or to the private attentions which Paul had received from Tychicus. This uncertainty arises from these two expressions being connected, a beloved brother and a faithful minister in the Lord. The former refers to Paul, to whom the second may be supposed also to apply, I am more inclined, however, to understand it as denoting the public ministry, for I do not think it probable that Paul would have sent any man who did not hold such a rank in the church as would secure the respectful attention of the Ephesians. Peace be to the brethren. I consider the word peace, as in the salutations of the epistle, to mean prosperity. Yet if the reader shall prefer to view it as signifying harmony, because immediately afterwards Paul mentions love, I do not object to that interpretation, or rather, it agrees better with the context. He wishes the Ephesians to be peaceable and quiet among themselves, and this, he presently adds, may be obtained by brotherly love and by agreement in faith. From this prayer we learn that faith and love, as well as peace itself, are gifts of God bestowed upon us through Christ, that they come equally from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all. The meaning is, may God continue to bestow his favour on all who love Jesus Christ with a pure conscience. The Greek word, which I follow Erasmus in translating sincerity, signifies literally uncorruptedness, which deserves attention on account of the beauty of the metaphor. Paul intended to state indirectly that when the heart of man is free from all hypocrisy, it will be free from all corruption. This prayer conveys to us the instruction that the only way of enjoying the light of the divine countenance is to love sincerely God's own Son, in whom his love towards us has been declared and confirmed. But let there be no hypocrisy, for most men, while they are not unwilling to make some professions of religion, entertain exceedingly low notions of Christ and worship him with pretended homage. I wish there were not so many instances in the present day to prove that Paul's admonition to love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity is as necessary as ever. End of section 14. End of commentary on the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians by John Calvin. Translated by William Pringle.